Can God, oh, this is a good question. Can God hurt us and call it what? Good. I think, really, as I look at this, keywords hurt and good, right? So why don't we break that down? Um, go ahead and open your Bibles to James chapter 1. Let's focus, we'll go backwards here, okay? We'll focus on the word good first, and then we'll go to hurt, okay? James chapter 1, let's see what Scripture says about what God gives His people. James chapter 1, starting in verse 18, Actually, you know what? Let's start up a little bit earlier. Let's start in verse 12. James says, Blessed is a man who perseveres under what? Trial. For once he has been approved, tested, and found to be uh, someone of faith, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is what? Tempted. Notice trial, temptation, big difference. No, let no one say, I'm being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil. Would we agree with that? Because God is holy, perfect, and righteous. And therefore, God himself does not tempt anyone. Then how are we tempted? Verse 14, each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust, which comes from our sin nature, right? Then when lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. Do not be deceived, verse 16, my beloved brethren. Here it is, verse 17. Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above. God gives good gifts because our God is a good and gracious God. Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. Great verse that tells you God does not change, right? Okay? And a great example of a good gift God gives from above, verse 18, in the exercise of his will, he brought us forth, meaning we were born again, regenerated. How? By the word of truth. Where did God's word of truth come from? Above, right? Good gift. So that we would be a kind of first fruits among his creatures. Okay, so the first question we have to look at is this. Can God hurt us and call it good? Now, we know that God gives good to his children, right? Every good gift comes from God, comes from above, right? God does not tempt us, right? But will God allow us to go through trials? Yes. Will God allow us to go through different, just stay in James right here. Look at verse two of chapter one. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various what? Trials, do you see it? Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Perfect and complete. What is God's goal for you in your salvation? Obviously to bring him glory, but who does God want you to be like? Christ. That's what he means when he says, let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, meaning that you become like Christ. We will never meet, uh, become perfectly like Christ on this side of heaven, but on that day, you will be like Christ. And so, just as God the Father allowed his beloved Son, who took on the form of flesh down here on earth, to go through trials, to go through suffering, what will God allow his children here on earth to do to make us like Christ? Right? To go through challenges, suffering, uh, uh, 
uh, discipline. So we know those things are even good, right? Now here's the question. Can God hurt us and call it good? Well, when you hear the word hurt, what kind of feeling do you get on that? Yeah, right? It's almost like it's this, it's this, this vindictive, like God is like this, 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 this divine ogre, you know, that, that just wants to hurt us. That's not what Scripture says. What did James say? Every good and perfect gift comes from God, okay? So God is not this evil divine ogre who is looking to hurt us. But, Scripture tells us God is a loving God. Would we agree with that? And guess what he does with his children? Disciplines us. Go to Hebrews chapter, a couple of verses or pages before, Hebrews chapter 12. Now this is interesting. Look what the writer of Hebrews says at the end of verse 5. My son... Do not regard lightly the what of the Lord? Discipline of the Lord. Now, when you hear the word discipline, does it give you kind of a different image than hurt? Well, guess what? Does discipline hurt? Sure it does. Let's keep going. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor faint when you are reproved by him. For those whom the Lord, what? Loves. He disciplines. Oh, how about this one? And he scourges every son whom he receives. Sounds like that's going to hurt a little bit, right, David? But that's a form of God's love. In fact, one of the ways you know you're saved is if you are experiencing discipline from God. Now, wait a second. Is that discipline meant to evilly hurt to, to be evil and to hurt us no because we know that every good gift comes from god so i guess the, the 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 conclusion would be that even discipline from god is actually good for us sure let's keep going verse seven it is for discipline that you endure what's god's goal for you christian for you to just walk through this life with no problems no suffering no nothing health wealth perfect life down here on earth no god's goal for you down here on earth is to become like christ and to bring him glory again we will never perfectly be like christ here on earth but that's god's goal here because we will be like christ in heaven so how does god do that well he'll give us his word to make us like christ he will give us um, blessings to make us like Christ, but he will also give us trials. He will also give us discipline to make us like Christ. Look what he says. It is for discipline that you endure, verse 7. God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? But if you're without discipline, of which all have become partakers, how about this? Then you are illegitimate children and not sons ah so watch does call god call discipline good is it good what does it tell us we are his children right in his family now will discipline hurt us is god trying to hurt us in an evil way no but discipline can hurt let's keep going look what he says here furthermore verse 9 we all had earthly fathers who disciplined us and we respected them shall we not much rather be subject to the father of spirits and live for they human fathers disciplined us for a short time as it seemed best to them but he god disciplines us for our good so can god hurt us and call it good yes or no Yes. Again, we have to be careful with the word hurt. Our image is something bad, something evil. But God's discipline, which will hurt at times, many times, can anybody currently relate, <laughs> is for our good. God calls it good. Look what he says. Verse, 10, uh, verse 11. 
Let's go to verse 10 again. For they, the human fathers, discipline us for a short time as seemed best to them, but he, God, our heavenly father, disciplines us for our good so that we may share his what? Holiness, to make us like Christ. You want to be holy? Guess what? God will use his holy word. He will transform you through his Holy Spirit and God will show his holy love to you by disciplining you. Verse 11, all discipline for the moment seems not to be what? Joyful. Can anybody agree with that? But it actually feels sorrowful, doesn't it? It can hurt. Yet to those who have been trained by it gymnasia greek word uh, the spiritual gymnasium where you learn to become strong and athletic and your faith is firm for those who have been trained by god's discipline afterwards because it'll hurt for a while it yields the what peaceful fruit of righteousness wow Therefore, the conclusion, verse 12, strengthen the hands that are weak and the knees that are feeble and make straight paths for your feet so that the limb which is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. In other words, don't whine about God's discipline. Don't criticize God. Don't say, God, why, why, why? You know why. He wants to make you like his beloved son. What a blessing. What an honor. What a privilege. So can God hurt us, not in an evil way, but in a good way to make us like Christ? What's the answer? Yes. And it's good, right? Because I don't know about you, but if God were to do nothing but give me what I want in this life, I would not become like Christ. If, 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 if God allowed me to go through this life without any discipline from him, oh my. I know you guys are a little bit more holy than me, right? You guys will be able to become like Christ without discipline, right? None of us will. Again, this is God's love. How did God show his love to us? By sending his son to die in our place. How does God show his love for us? By sending his spirit to live within us. How does God show his love for us? By giving us his holy word. How does God show his love for us? By giving us his church, God's people. How does God show love for us? Watch, by disciplining us. Don't ever resent God's discipline. When you're being disciplined by God, it is evidence that you are truly a child of God. Amen?